Welcome to Edipedia World. I am C. Radhika Sahani. In the last session, we just discussed that what are the various techniques. Today, we are going to continue regarding those techniques, that how those techniques are used and depending on the type of project. There are three types of project, mutually exclusive, independent and complementary. So, in all the three projects, how those techniques are being used. So, we discussed regarding NPV value, where we compute the difference between the inflows and outflows present value. Let's start from NPV technique itself. So, if there is a mutually exclusive proposal, to reiterate, mutually exclusive proposal are said to be mutual, I mean, the proposal in which acceptance of one project means automatic rejection of all other proposals which are mutually exclusive to that project. So can we take an example of repair and replace one? Similarly, there's a lease or a buy option. So these all are the mutually exclusive proposals. So mutually exclusive proposals could be of two types. One, you could say of having equal lines and other of unequal lines. So equal lines means both the proposals are having the same project life. And unequal means different project life. So we take an example, let's say that you have to buy a photo stick machine. It could either be of a Canon or it could be of Samsung. Both are having different outflows. Let's say one is more expensive than the other, but the life or you can say the cash inflows that you can derive from one type of machine is more. Let's say that for one it is for six years and from the other it is only for three years. Obviously on the other hand, the outflow for the three years is less as compared to the other one. So the one which gives you more benefit is to be taken. So this is an example of a mutually exclusive proposal. So of having equal lines means if both and cash inflows are known, the proposal having higher NPV will be chosen. Let's say you have two proposals. So whichever is giving you the more or you can say net present value is more. That is the present value of cash inflows is more than the present value of cash outflows. That will be chosen. If there are unequal lines, in that you have to compute an equivalent NPV. So equivalent NPV means an NPV, let's say that one project is of three years and the other project is of six years. So to compare both the projects, the both the projects are not comparable. So to compare the both the projects, you have to compute the equivalent NPV. To compute equivalent NPV, you have to divide the net present value by the cumulative PVF. So if the project is of three years, so whatever PVF is for first, second and third year, you have to divide it by the sum of that. And one is of six years, so you have to total or you can sum the PVF of one to six years. Now, whichever equivalent NPV is more, that proposal will be accepted. So let's take an example. So equal lines is more clear. Let's jump on to unequal lines. So if Mr. X is considering buying a photocopy machine, with the cost of machine. So there is one thing that the investment is always made at the zero period. So when you are solving any question, but whatever benefit is there, so the income or inflow is throughout the year. But for our competition purpose, we always take it as at the end of the year. So if I say that cash inflow at first year is one lakh in Canon model and Samsung it is 80,000. So this one lakh is being earned throughout the year. But for our competition purpose, I take it as at the end of year one. So required rate of return is 10%. So we have to compute. We know that PVCO of Canon is 2,50,000 and Samsung model is 1,20,000. We have to compute the present value of cash inflows. So the cash inflow from first to six year, the required rate of return is 10%. So the first year, it will be discounted by one divided by 1.10, that is 0.909. When you again divide this value by 0 0.10, you'll get 0.826. Again divide by 0 0.10, 1.1, you get it 0 0.751. Again 1.1, you get it 0 0.683. So cost of machine is this way. Cash inflows for first to six years is 1,140,000, 160, 2 lakh, 1,80,000 and 1,50,000 for Canon model. And for Samsung model, it is 80,000, 1,20,000 and 1,50,000. I will sum up the cash inflows for first to six year for Canon model, which is equal to 6,59,862. How I compute it? So the first year, the present value factor is 0 0.909. I multiply it with the 
cash inflow after one year, which is one lakh, which is equal to ninety thousand nine hundred nine, which represents its present value. Similarly, I go over the second year, where the present value factor is point eight two six, and the amount is one lakh forty thousand. So the present value will be one lakh fifteen thousand seven hundred two. Likewise, I computed the cash flow for all the six years, and I computed its present value. I sum it up, which equals to six lakh fifty nine thousand eight hundred sixty two. You guys have me. Then I find the difference, and the net present value in Canon model is four lakh nine thousand eight hundred sixty two. Similarly, I go for Samsung in Samsung to compute the cash inflow. Whatever inflows are there for first year, second year, and third year, it is be multiplied by their present value factor, which gives me a total cash inflow of two lakh eighty four thousand five hundred ninety eight. So in Samsung model, the net present value is one lakh sixty four thousand five hundred ninety eight. So if we just go by this data, Canon model is beneficial. But the Samsung is for a project life of three years, and Canon is for a project life of six years. So to make the both the projects comparable, you have to compute equivalent NPV. So for Canon model, you have to divide it by the sum of six years. So point nine zero nine. Plus point eight two six, plus point seven five one, plus point six eight three, plus point six two one, and plus point five six four is equals to four point three double five. So for Canon, it will be NPV, which is four lakh nine thousand eight hundred and sixty two, divided by four point three double five, which is equals to ninety four thousand one hundred and seven. For Samsung model. The total NPV is one lakh sixty four thousand five hundred and ninety eight. The sum of PVF for first three years, which is point nine zero nine plus point eight twenty six plus point seven five one, the summation of this is to be divided. So this will give you an equivalent NPV of sixty six thousand one hundred and eighty three. Now we will compare these two NPV, and we conclude that Canon Photo State Machine should be accepted. Because the equivalent NPV is more. So this is an example where there is a mutually exclusive decision. For the other type of decision, so if there is a complementary project, complementary project means that acceptance of one project means acceptance of all other complementary projects, and rejection of one proposal means rejection of all other complementary proposal. So for an NPV technique. If there are option for a complementary project, you will go for that proposal only when the NPV is more than or equal to zero. This implies that the cash inflows are more than the cash outflows. So, if the cash inflows are more than the cash outflows, we will accept all the proposals. If it is less, we will reject all the proposals. So, and now this is if the projects are independent. That is. The acceptance or rejection of one proposal does not affect the acceptance or rejection of another proposal. In such scenario, using the NPV technique, we will accept all those proposals which is has NPV more than or equal to zero, and we will reject all those proposals which have NPV less than zero. That is where the present value of cash outflow is more than the present value of cash inflow. This is how we go when we are choosing for NPV technique. This is a DCF technique. So let's discuss the non-DCF technique first, where we are not considering the time value of money. So the first one was payback period. Payback period, in simple terms, could be say that period in which your money comes back to you. That is how long or what is the duration when you can earn back the amount that you have invested. So payback period is a technique in which we calculate the time, which is the number of years, with the cash invested in a project. Will be paid back to the person making investment of net cash outflows. So let's say that there's a project in which you are investing one lakh rupees. You are receiving twenty thousand every year. So this means that in five years, twenty first year, twenty second year, you will get back your amount. So the payback period of this project is five years. But I'm not considering time value of money like twenty thousand today, twenty thousand next year. So the time value of money is not considered. That's why it is one of the traditional technique. So there is a criticism that since you are not considering the time value of money, it is not an appropriate technique. But it's a famous technique used because in this technique we get to know that 
how long it's being taken to get our money back. So which project you are going to take? One is a project, one lakh, where 20,000 is being received every year. And similarly, there's another project in which you are investing one lakh rupees, but you're getting 30,000 every year. So the next proposal, the payback period is less. So the decision criteria for a payback period or in this technique is the proposals having lower payback period. So when you talk about the different projects, so if there's a mutually exclusive proposal, you will go for a proposal which has a lower payback period, or you can say earliest payback period. When we talk about complementary proposals, we will go for those proposals which has a payback period less than the standard payback period. Obviously, in the mutual exclusive proposal, the payback period should be less than the standard payback period. And in the complementary proposal, all those proposals which are having a payback period less than the standard payback period will be accepted. If that payback period is more than the standard payback period, you will reject all those proposals. And for the independent one, whatsoever proposals are there, if their payback period is less than the standard payback period, it will be accepted. Otherwise, you are not going to accept that proposal. Let's do an example where we compute the payback period. So payback period is obviously your initial investment amount divided by annual cash outflows. So in this scenario, whatever example that we have taken, that 1 lakh is the initial investment and you're receiving 20,000 every year. So this is a one amount, that lump sum amount which you are receiving annually. In such scenario, if you have to compute the payback period, it is simply 1 lakh divided by 20,000. Five years, you will get back your amount. So let's, if the example is there that the initial investment is 1 lakh, annual cash flows are 25,000. So the payback period will be 1 lakh divided by 25,000, which is 4 years. In 4 years, you will get your amount back. So the next 4 years, it's only the amount of income that you are earning. Your outflow amount is being recovered in 4 years. But what if, the here I am taking that you are receiving the same amount every year. If the cash inflow for a project are of unequal amount, in such scenario, to compute the payback period, we have to first compute the cumulative cash inflows. To explain that if the initial investment is of 150,000, and every year, like first year you're getting 50,000, second year you're getting 80,000, third year we are getting 60,000, and fourth year you're getting 40,000. So the total cash inflow of 230,000. To compute the payback period, you have to first find the cumulative inflows. So first year you're getting 50, next year it will be 1 lakh 30, 50 plus 80, this much you have earned. Third year it will be 1 lakh 30 plus 60, which is equal to 1 lakh 90,000. So since you have invested 1 lakh 50, in second year you will earn till 1 lakh 30,000. Third year 1 lakh 90,000. 1 lakh 30 you have to earn 20,000 more. And you are earning 60,000 in one year. So in one year you are earning 60,000. So 20,000 will be one year into 20 divided by 60. Or I can say one year is divided by 60,000 multiplied by 20,000 plus two years. So two years you are computing 1,30,000 plus what is the additional period of one year. So one year you have to interpolate that values. So to compute the payback period will be two years plus one year multiplied by you have to reach to 20,000 divided by 190 because in one year you are earning 60,000. So payback period will be 2.33 years. This is how to compute when the cash inflows are of unequal amounts. The next technique is average rate of return. In this technique, a relative profitability is considered with the different capital investment proposals as the basis of ranking them. So here, the fact which is being neglected by the payback period is taken into consideration. So you can say that average rate of return is computed the profitability in relation to the capital employed into the organization, into the project. So there are two approaches. One, if the project is in initial stage. In that scenario, ARR is the average profit after tax divided by the initial investment. If you are introducing more capital into this, so average capital employed, or you can say 
can be computed, which is the average of initial investment and terminal value. So AR in such case will be average profitability. You can say profit after tax divided by the average capital employed multiplied by 100. So in ARR, a decision criteria is comparing it with the minimum required rate of return. So every organization has a hurdle rate or you can say a cutoff rate, which is the objective. That is the investment is made to earn at least that return. So if the ARR of the proposal is more than that minimum required rate of return, that proposal is accepted. So if we have a mutually exclusive proposal, the one which has ARR more than the other one, or you can say which has the highest ARR is accepted. If the proposals are complementary, then we sum up the investment in all those projects and also the profitability from all those projects and we compute ARR then. If that ARR is more than the required rate of return, then we accept all the complementary proposals. Otherwise, it is to be rejected. And if the proposals are independent, then we have to see that which proposal has an ARR more than the minimum desired return. So those proposals which are ARR more than minimum desired returns, those proposals could be accepted, otherwise to be rejected. So this is that we are going to discuss in this class. In next class, we will discuss certain DSF techniques, which is NPV, which we've already discussed. The other three one, so they are discounted payback period, IRR, and one more. So we will cover these three techniques in the next class. Thank you. And have a nice day. Keep smiling.